Hey, Rabbit. Who, me? Yeah, you. Can you tell me how to get to the Mayfair Theater? Sure. It's just down at the end of the street. What's going on there? Oh, I've got a whole truckload of tricks to drop off there. A whole truckload of tricks? Just for me. Oh, grapeity grape, lemony lemons, orangey orange. Oh, boy. Big G Cereals presents The Magic Secrets Video. Hi, everybody. Sonny the Cuckoo Bird here. Welcome to Big G's Magic Secrets Video. We're going to have a great time today learning about magic. You're going to learn 12 magic tricks, and they're all great. You're going to love them. Okay, I'll be right down to get the show started. Yahoo! And now, the stars of our show. Magician, Dan Witkowski. And your favorite Big G characters, Count Chocula. Frankenberry. The Honey Nut Bee. Sonny the Cuckoo Bird. Lucky the Leprechaun. The Smorcerer. And of course, that silly rabbit. I heard there was supposed to be a whole truckload of tricks in here, and uh, I'm looking for them. Where are they? They'll be out on stage in just a minute. Oh, boy, I can hardly wait. <laughs> OK, kids, come on out. <laughs> Shelly, Dustin, you kids are going to watch a rehearsal today. How about that? Huh? <laughs> I tell you what, sit down on the, on the first two seats there. There you go. Thanks. Good. Now, listen, if you see something that you really like, I want you to fraud, see? <laughs> fraud. Yeah. Have fun, kids, huh? All right. Ready backstage? Ready. OK, ready on lights. Ready. Curtain. about those tricks? Yeah, weren't they great? Well, yes, but... Hi, I'm magician Dan Witkowski, and you just saw some examples of what we magicians refer to as illusion. Now, very simply put, illusions are the impossible made possible. And that's exactly what you're going to be seeing on this videotape. In addition, I'll be teaching you 12 exciting magic tricks you can perform yourself. And if you watch the tape carefully and then rehearse everything I show you, you'll be able to put on your own magic show for your family and friends. 
But before we show you those tricks, let me show you one more illusion and see if you can figure it out. Okay? Very good. Watch closely. Now, for this illusion, I'm going to need the assistance of a few volunteers. How about you two? Would you mind helping? No. Come on right up. And your name is? Dustin. Good to meet you, Dustin. And you are? Shelly. Hi, Shelly. Stand right over here. Watch closely. A trunk. Take a peek inside. Empty. Yeah, looks empty to me. Sure is. Great job, kids. Thanks for helping. Terrific. Thanks, Shelly. Welcome. Why didn't I think of that before? Kids always have tricks. Or maybe they know where the magician is hiding them. The tricks? I think it's that silly rabbit in their disguise. Let's check. <laughs> <laughs> well, silly rabbit, if you want the tricks, the magician has it right up there. Wow, boy! Great rehearsal, everybody. Let's get the props reset for tonight's show, okay? Hey, what are you doing in there? I'm looking for the tricks. Tricks? <laughs> Say, why aren't you hanging around a top hat like a regular rabbit? No, really. I want to know all about the tricks. The tricks? You must mean the magic tricks. Hmm. Mm. Can you keep a secret? I keep a secret. Tell you what, I'll go backstage and I'll change out of my costume, and if you want to come on back, I'll teach you a couple of simple tricks, okay? Wow. Hey, what about us? Can we come too? Well, um, Harry, is it okay if I take your grandkids backstage and show them a few tricks? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> okay, and why don't you come along too? We'll show you some great magic tricks, so just follow us. Okay, here we go. Nothing up my sleeve. Nothing up my other sleeve. Now watch. Hey, that's not right. Ah, oh, there we go. Much better. Yahoo! Wow. Look at all these great costumes and props. You sure have a nice place here. Gee, showbiz is so glamorous and, and fun. Well, it sure is fun. Standing up in front of an audience is a great feeling. Say, I was just getting ready to show Dustin and Shelly some magic tricks. Why don't you come on over and join us? Now, have you ever seen a magical silver dollar before? No. Uh -huh. Well, this is one of them. They're very difficult to find and even more difficult to hold on to. My mom says the same thing about regular dollars. Let me show you a way you can keep track of the silver dollar fairly easily. You begin by placing it in the center of a small square of paper. You fold over one side of the paper, and then the next side, and hold it up to the light. Can you see the coin in there? Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. You fold over the top, and then fold up the bottom, then wave your hands over the top and say the magic words. Tricks are for kids? You've got it. Take a peek. The coin vanishes. Where'd Whoa. it go? Well, we'll show you this and a few other magic secrets, but first I'd like to introduce you to a friend of mine. He'll show you the props that you need for this and all the other tricks we'll be showing you today. Oh, hi, everybody. I'm the Honey Nut Bee, and I'm in charge of all the props for this magic show. That means I've been busy as a bee, buzzing around getting all the things we use to do magic. Now, on your show, you're going to have to be in charge of your own props. You'll need to gather up some very simple things you probably already have around the house. I'll help you by giving you a list of the things you need to do each trick. Here's what you'll need to make the coin disappear. A large coin, a piece of paper about five inches by eight inches, almost any kind of paper will do, 
as long as you can't see through it. Now, because this is a videotape, you can start and stop and watch over and over. You can stop right now and gather up everything you need. Now, watch closely as the magician shows you the secret. If you miss something, just rewind and watch again. Now, the secret of a lot of great magic tricks are really quite simple, but even though this is a simple trick, it's really quite a fooler. Let me show you how it's done. Before I begin, I use a small rectangle of paper that I form in kind of a tic-tac-toe pattern. Now, the coin goes right in the center. Now, in this case, I'm using sil a silver dollar, but if you'd prefer, you can use a 50-cent piece or a quarter, whatever fits in your hand best. Now, to make the coin disappear, I begin by folding this side of the paper over, followed by this side. Then, I pick up the coin by pinching it through the paper with my thumb and index finger. Here's where the sneaky part of the trick comes in, because as I hold the coin through the paper in my hand, I fold down the top of the, the paper, and I allow the coin to slide down into my hand by releasing my grip on the coin through the paper. Wow, now, sneaky. that's all done as I'm looking everybody right in the eye. Then I fold the bottom part of the, the paper up so I have a nice square packet. Here's another sneaky maneuver that comes in. As I hold the paper up, I continue to look at the small square of paper as this hand with the coin drops into my lap. That way I can just set the coin in my lap and then we're free and clear. Now pretend that the coin is still in the paper and that it has some weight to it, but the rest is showmanship. It's all up to you. You can wave your hand over the top, wiggle your fingers, and say the magic words. Tricks are for kids. You know them very well. Then proceed to tear up the paper and it looks like the coin completely vanishes. Did you like that? Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's, it's magic. <laughs> it is magic, Rabbit. It's kind of a fun trick, too, wouldn't you say? Mm-hmm. I thought you'd think so. Now, how would you like to see another trick where we make a coin disappear? Sure. Yeah. Well, this one is a little bit different because it uses a penny. Wow. That makes sense. It sure does. Now, in addition to the penny, we're also going to use a little shaker of salt. We'll cover the penny with the salt shaker, and then... I cover the salt shaker with a couple of napkins. If you would hold on to that for a moment, Rabbit. Mm -hmm. And I will cover the shaker, and I'm going to use both Dustin and Shelly to help me with this trick. We cover up the shaker, we'll use the second napkin, and we both have to have you test your magical powers because we're going to count to three. And at the count of three, the penny will penetrate right through the tabletop. Kind of a penetration, I guess you could say. Are you ready? Let's begin. We cover up the penny and count. One, One two, two, three. three. Take a look. The penny has gone right through the tabletop. Yes, it's gone. It's amazing, mm. isn't it, Rabbit? Now, um, <laughs> let's try it again. We'll bring the penny back up through the tabletop. We count three, two, and one. When we do that, take a look. There it is, right back where we started from on the table. Isn't that an amazing trick? How do we know that the penny wasn't there all along? I can yeah. tell you're a skeptic. I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll try it one more time. We cover up the penny with the salt shaker, and Shelly, give me your hand, if you would, please. Preferably the clean one, right over there. Uh, oh, I guess that was the clean one, wasn't it? We'll have you tap the salt shaker to help the penny go through. Are you ready? Yep. Ready, Rabbit? Yep. He's yep. ready. At the count of three, one, two, three, go. Oh, my gosh, I forgot oh, to tell you oh. that if you push too hard, it's the salt shaker that ends up going through the table and not the penny after all. Did you like that? Yeah. yeah. I hope you did. Actually, here's the Honey Nut Bee to tell us what you'll need to do this trick yourself. Hello again. Things are getting in shape for the big show. Now you're learning another trick, the vanishing salt shaker. I've got a list of props right here. You'll need several paper napkins, a plastic salt shaker, and a small coin. Oh, and I should tell you that this trick can only be done while sitting at a table. Good luck with this one. Here's the magician to show you how. Now, the secret of this trick really relies in misdirection. The coin helps for that. That's why we use the penny. You cover the penny with the salt shaker to begin with, and then the misdirection is aided with the use of the napkins. Now, if you don't have napkins, you can use paper towels, but make sure you use a plastic salt shaker for this trick. Now, another tip is to make sure that when you squeeze the napkins down on top of the salt shaker, that you form the shape of the shaker, okay? Very good. Now, the first time I tell everybody I'm going to make the coin go through the table, it really doesn't. Remember, I counted three, one, two, three, tapped the table, and I said, yes, it's gone. Well, of course, it's still there. Then we repeated it. I said, three, two, and one. I tapped the table. Then I lifted the salt shaker and the napkins and showed that the coin was still there. 
that's when I did the sneaky part, because as I brought the napkins over to the edge of the table, the salt shaker fell into my lap. Simple as that. Now, when we continued with the trick, I pointed to the coin and I said, let's try it one more time. That's when I wanted to get Michelle involved. As I placed the napkins over the coin, the salt shaker was already gone, but I placed it down with a thud. I let my hand hit the table. I asked for Michelle's hand. I took it. We placed it over the napkins, which still looked like the salt shaker, and I said, at the count of three, we're going to have you tap. At that point, I pushed her hand down, and it looked like the salt shaker was still there, and it went through the table. At that point, you grab underneath the table and make it look like the salt shaker right, went right through the top of the table. It's really pretty simple, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I bet you thought all of these magic tricks were going to be difficult. They're really quite easy. But one thing to keep in mind is never repeat this trick, or any magic trick for that matter. Instead, have another trick ready to show people when they ask. That's a great trick. And I love tricks. You can make things disappear. What else can you do? Yeah. Well, I've got another trick I can show you right now. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it was, however. Oh, wait a second. We tied a string around the rabbit's finger to remind me... to remind me to do a trick with string. I've got some string right here. Let me show you. Two small pieces of string, and I'm going to give one end to you, Dustin, and one end to you, Shelley. Now, I'll hold on to the two ends in this hand, and I'm going to have you pull on your end, Shelley, of your string, and you on yours, Dustin. Watch closely, because the magic happens rather quickly as the two wow. become one. Wow, that's great. You like that, huh? Yeah. The trick is really quite simple because it's all in the string itself. There are no special props for this. It does require, however, that you use a piece of string that's made up of many small filaments. Now, in this case, if we twist in the middle, you can see this string has about 10 separate fibers or filaments on the inside. What you have to do in order to perform the trick is separate the filaments into two separate sections. It's a little easier if we use this piece of yarn. Let me pick it up right in the middle, remove this string, and you can see there are two main filaments going right through the yarn. If we separate them right in the middle and pull them apart, then we twist together to form two false ends with the yarn. Do you see that? Yeah. It's really quite mm -hmm. simple. But if you take a peek, they really do join together right at that point. So from the very beginning, when you pull out what appears to be two strings, but really is one, you should hold them right at the point where both of them join. Now hold the two pieces of yarn, or what really is one piece of yarn, up just like this, bring it out, and give one end to somebody to hold over there, and somebody can hold onto the other end. I'll hold onto this right now, and watch what happens normally under the cover of my hand. As we pull, those two false ends unravel, and we pull, and it jumps together, and it really becomes one. So it Yay. looks like you've changed two into one. Mm. They're really quite simple, and you thought these tricks were going to be quite tough, didn't you? Yeah, I did. So did I. These are great tricks, but do you have any that are bigger? Anything bigger? Well, actually, it's just a matter of going from strings to ropes. I've got some right here. And Dustin, I'd like you to help me with this next trick. Uh, do you have any idea what we're going to do with these ropes? Cut them in half? Well, actually, Dustin, it's not the ropes that we're going to cut in half. Why don't you both step over here and I'll show you exactly what we're going to do. Dustin, why don't you stand right here and Shelly right over there by the box. And the ropes will go right behind Dustin. Now, Shelly, you hold on to those two ends of the rope, and I'll bring these two up around the front, and we'll tie Dustin in just to make sure he doesn't change his mind. Okay? Is everybody set? Dustin, how about Has yourself? Has this trick worked every time you've done it? Uh, geez, I don't know. This is the first time I've tried the trick, but it should. Rabbit, are you ready? I can't bear to watch. Oh, no. At the count of three. One, two, three weeks ago. We had a minor problem with the trick, so stand straight, Dustin, and look ahead. Here we go. One, two, three. There go the ropes. Whoa, it worked. The ropes went right through him. Hey, let's take a look at the honey nut bee now, and he'll show us what we'll need to learn the ropes. Oh, oh, hi. 
Hi. Uh, uh, I was just getting some props together for the, the trick you just watched, and I uh, kind of got carried away. But this won't happen to you. Now, you're going to need two ropes about seven feet long, a few inches of white cotton thread, and some safety scissors. Oh, and you may need to rehearse this, so you'll need extra thread, okay? Now, good luck learning this one, and uh, if, you, uh, if you'll excuse me, uh, I gotta find Harry Houdini's phone number. Help! Harry! The real secret of this trick is not in the ropes, but a small piece of thread that binds them together. Let me show you. You need only about eight inches of thread, and that goes right in the middle of the ropes. Now, it's a good idea to tie two separate knots with the thread, just to make sure. That way, they won't come apart during the trick. Once you've got the knots, trim away any excess thread, and the little knot will be virtually invisible. Take a look. When you hold the ropes in your hand, you actually cover over the two loops of rope. It looks like you have two separate ropes running through your hand, but really, you have the middle of two different ropes. Do you follow? Yeah. Okay, here's the secret. As I pull on the ropes, I bring them behind my assistant's back, and I give one end, really one rope, to one assistant, and I hold onto the other ends over here. We take any two ends and tie a knot in the rope. Very good. You take the opposite end that you had to begin with, and then, at the count of three, you tug on the ropes, and they appear to pass right through the assistant. Let's see how it looks, first of all, from the front. One, two, three. Now, let's take a look from the magician's point of view way back here. Are you ready? Here it is. One, two, three. So the real secret of this trick is how you hold those ropes tied together by the thread. So practice and have fun with your first illusion, okay? Hi, everybody. I'm back. Now, watch closely and magic. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. What happened to the color? I got it. That's better. Ta-da. Ha, yahoo. Now it's time for one of my favorite tricks. Over here. Here I am. Yoo-hoo! In here! It's Lucky! Lucky, what are you doing in there? Why, it's simple. I'm waiting to be discovered. <laughs> well, Lucky, if you want to be discovered and break into show business, you shouldn't be hiding in a dressing room. No, no, you don't understand. I'm hiding because the boys and girls keep chasing me to get me lucky charms. And I like to play hide and seek because when they find me, we all get to share me cereal. Oh, How about you? Would you like some lucky charms? I'd love to, but I just finished the last of it this morning. <whistles> but I can use this empty box to show you another great magic trick that the kids wanted to learn. You can learn, too. You know, sort of magician to leprechaun. Wonderful, lad. Hey! Wow. How do you do that? Now, this may be an empty box, but there's still a lot of magic inside. I bet. <laughs> Look, kids, there's me picture on the box. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> now watch closely. We begin by closing the bottom flap and then close the top flap. And then we say the magic words. Lucky charms. Take a look. Oh, pink like hearts. <laughs> oh, orange like stars. Yellow, green, blue, purple. All the colors of the rainbow. That's great. <laughs> oh, Mr. Magician, that's one even I haven't seen. Well, it sure looks like magic, doesn't it? Now, would you like to learn how to do this trick? Uh -huh. I sure would. Me too. Okay, but first, write down what the honey nut bee tells you to find, and we'll be back in a minute. Me, huh? You're learning how to make the magic box and the floating scarf. I've got a list of what you'll need. Here we go. First, you'll need two empty cereal boxes. 
a pair of safety scissors, a bottle of glue and some clear tape, a book or something to use as a weight, and some scarves and ribbons. By the way, to learn the floating scarf, you'll need black thread, a scarf, and beeswax. Now you get the props together, and Dan will show you what to do. Hmm, beeswax. Uh... You may remember, before Lucky appeared, I was telling you about my favorite trick, ah. with the dancing handkerchief. Actually, the dancing handkerchief is really a very simple trick. You can cause a handkerchief to float or dance around, but let me show you how it really works. If you take a close look, you'll see on the end of the handkerchief, there's a small dab of wax. This is beeswax, and sometimes people have them in sewing kits. So if you can get a small dab of beeswax, that's all you'll need. That and a small piece of black thread. Take a look. The thread actually goes from the end of the wax all the way through my sweater. I've wrapped it around my button on my shirt and then poked it through and pulled it out. Now, you might want to check with somebody just to make sure it's okay to do that with the clothes you're wearing, first of all. And also, it's a good idea to wear a dark-colored sweater or one with a busy pattern on it. That way, you won't see the thread. Now, all you do is borrow a handkerchief and carefully attach the wax to the end of it. Oh, now, I get it. when you have the thread between your thumbs, you can cause the handkerchief to come to life and jump around just like that. <laughs> it's just a quick trick but you can have some fun with it. And remember, don't do it too long, otherwise people will catch on to how it works. Now let me show you one other quick thing you can do with the thread. You can also attach it to the back of a coin. Carefully place it on the coin, and then drop the coin in a glass. Magically, you can cause the coin to rise and drop at will. Simple as that. I guarantee you'll have some fun with the little magical thread and the wax. Okay, now let me show you how that Lucky Charms cereal box production trick works. I'll show you the finished box in just a moment, but here's what we have to do in order to make the box up. First of all, we begin with two boxes that are exactly alike. Now from the first box, what I do is take a pair of safety scissors and separate the bottom flaps. There's glue holding it together, so separate the bottom flaps, that way you can fold the box completely flat. I've also removed the very top flap, the one where the other end tucks under. You won't be needing this for the trick at all. Once you've cut off the top flap and flattened out the bottom, put this part aside and go to the other box that you're going to be using. This part is a little trickier because what you're going to do is trim off the front panel of the box, but it's very important that you leave a border about a half an inch around the two sides and the bottom. Now this border, I painted yellow just so you can see here. You don't have to do that, of course, but that is to show you where you place some glue. Now this is ordinary glue that I would place along the two edges and across the bottom. Now be very careful not to get any excess glue on the bottom or the back of either of the boxes. Once the glue is in place, carefully bend those flaps down and position it over the front of the other box. Now, it's a good idea to have somebody help you with this because you can use a few extra hands. Once it's in position, you place it down. Then it's a good idea to place something on top of it just to help weight it down. I'll use a couple of books in this case. Another thing to keep in mind is to make sure the glue doesn't seep out of the sides and get on a tablecloth or a, a wooden table. Once that's set, you can set it aside for about two hours. It'll take a little while for the glue to dry. Uh -huh. When it's finished, your box will look like this. Ah. It looks like an ordinary box, but let me show you what we've done. We've created a hidden pocket in it. See that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, very easy. The hidden pocket goes all the way down to the bottom. Now, into that pocket, you can place a variety of items, like these handkerchiefs, or you may want to produce some ribbons, some stamps, just about anything that will fit inside. You can also use this box to cause items to vanish. Now, take a look. Now that the handkerchiefs are inside, this is what it looks like when you look through the box from your end. 
But to the audience, it looks like this. Perfectly empty, huh? <laughs> okay. Now, after you've shown the box empty, close up the flaps and put a little piece of tape right along the bottom side just to hold the bottom closed. Wave your hand over the top, say the magic words, Lucky Charms, Hi. and when you reach inside, take a look. You're really pulling out the scarves <laughs> from that top pocket. That's kind of a fun trick, isn't it? Yeah. An amazing and colorful trick. It was pretty colorful, but Lucky, I've got another trick that's just as colorful. And all you'll need for this trick is a box of crayons and an imagination. Hold on to the crayons, if you would, please, and I'm going to have you select any one of the eight crayons in the box. Mm. After you have one of the crayons, I'm going to have Dustin place it in my hand. Very good. I'm going to attempt to read your mind after you put the remaining crayons out of sight. Are you ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The color you're thinking of is yellow. Ah. Right. Yeah. How'd you guess it? Would you like to see? Sure. It's very easy. Let me show you. The crayons are unprepared. And when I hand the box to you, you can pull out any crayon at all. As I turn away, you simply place the crayon in my hand. Now. I ask you to hide the remaining crayon so I can't take a peek at them and find out which one is missing. Now, as I turn around, all I do is look you in the eye. Then, from the back, with my fingernail, I merely clip a small piece of crayon just like that. I transfer the crayon to the other hand, and as I go forward to look you in the eye, I glance at my thumb. Now. On the edge of my thumb is the small color of crayon. I just glance at that briefly, and I announce the color you've selected is orange. Ah, right? Yeah. Take a peek. It's as easy as that. Now, it's a fairly simple trick, but we've been doing a lot of tricks today. Let me ask you, of all of the tricks in magic, which one is your very favorite? I like when people appear from nowhere. I like it when they disappear. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Lucky. Well, it looks like that took care of your favorite trick. Now let's see if we can try Shelly's. Why don't you join me out on stage where we have a little more room, okay? Come on. Okay. <laughs> now all you have to do is concentrate on your favorite cereal, okay? Great. Concentrate. 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 You rang. Good evening. Hey, you guys just can't sneak up on somebody like that. Well, we didn't sneak up. Frank and Betty and I were cleaning out the castle, and all of a sudden we showed up here. Yes, and it was a pretty bumpy ride, but quick. By the way, who are you? Oh, um, I'm magician Dan Witkowski, and, and these two kids are friends of mine. Allow me to introduce you. This is Dustin. You must be Dustin. I'll bet yeah. you're Shelly. That's right. Hey, you already know each other, huh? These are our favorite cereals. Oh, really? Well, it's a good thing you two cut-ups just dropped in because we were just getting ready to rehearse another illusion. And you can help, okay? Right over here. Watch closely.
this is gonna be great! Watch! My own version of a levitation! practice that trick we're gonna show Dan later. Great idea. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay, you have the dollar and the clips. Good. Now fold the dollar in thirds. Okay. And put one clip there. Right. Perfect. And the other clip over there. Okay. Okay. Now one, two, three, and pull. Hey, oh, we're it goes together. It we did it. Oh, that's yeah. Good. Shh, shh, shh. Here comes Dan. <gasps> oh, hi, gang. What's going on? Oh, hi, hi, Dan. Dan. Dustin and Shelly have something to show you. Oh, a magic trick for me, huh? Great. Yeah, it's really quite simple, but it's quite a fooler. All you have to do is first is fold the bill in thirds like I have done. Okay. Then you connect two paper clips. Very good. You just c c put the bill, the clips on the bill. I see. Very good. Yeah. Say the magic word. Oh, uh, tricks are for kids. You got it. Yeah. Hey. Whoa, yeah. Look at that. Again. They're clipped together. That is pretty neat. Let's find out what we need to do the trick from the honey nut bee. This is an easy trick to learn. It shouldn't take you too long. And there's another real good trick coming up right after this one. Now, you're going to need two paper clips, a dollar bill, or a piece of paper the same size. I'll see you later. You know, I really appreciate your teaching me this trick, and it's great because you don't have to prepare anything in advance, and you can even borrow all of the props that you need. Uh, this dollar bill can just be a piece of paper this size, too, if I understand, right? Right. Okay, now let me make sure I understand how the trick works. You take the bill and fold it in thirds, but this third goes over the front part of the bill, and this side goes over in the back, so that we kind of form a an S almost, okay? Like the front, back, and middle. That's right, front, back, and middle. Now, that's important to remember when we put on the paper clips because this clip here, we're using a pink clip, but you can use any clips. It's just easier to follow with the colors here. This goes in the middle section and in the front section, just like that. So the back part of the bill isn't clipped yet. But we use this clip to go on this side of the bill, and that clips the middle and the back of the bill. You got it. Okay, so if we take a look at it this way, it looks like that. The pink bill has two sections clipped, and the yellow bill, and the yellow clip has two sections clipped. Okay, now, I hold the bill up like this. And, and say the magic words. Oh, the magic words. Oh, tricks are for kids. That's you got right, it. okay. Yeah. And as I pull apart, even though the bill is coming together, the clips come together, they become linked. <laughs> Just like that. Hey, that is a pretty good trick. Dan, what's the best way to rehearse a trick? Now, I like to take and practice all of my magic in front of a mirror. That way, I can see the trick exactly the same way the audience will see it. Now, another tip is, as I'm teaching you the tricks here today, if there's something you don't quite understand, play the videotape back over the section that becomes a little confusing. That way you can see exactly what I'm doing and you can follow along. Good idea. Okay, now there's one other thing that every magician should know, and that is practice makes perfect. So if you want to practice over and over again, you can be sure then the trick will come off just the way the audience will like to see it, okay? Okay. Very good. Actually, I'll give you one more tip, and that is if you can do more than one trick using the same props, you're going to be that much better off. Maybe I'll give you an example. Shelly, why don't you take your dollar bill, and I'm going to have you fold it in half. This? Mm-hmm. Now take the bill and fold it into quarters. Very good. And fold it one more time into a nice square packet, into eighths. Have you done so? Yep. Terrific. Let me explain. I'm going to borrow the bill and just tuck that down inside of my hand. Now, Rabbit, we're going to get you involved. Okay, all you have to do is wave your paw over my hand, right like that, very good. Watch your bill, because slowly it dematerializes into nothing. Oh, huh, that's great. 
Here's the honey nut bee one more time to show us what we'll need for this trick. Back so soon, huh? I bet you're here to find out what you need for the vanishing dollar trick, right? That's what I thought. I got my prop list right here. Let's take a look. You'll need a piece of elastic about 20 inches long or five or six rubber bands, some clear tape, a cereal box, safety scissors, a paper clip, and of course a dollar bill or a piece of paper the same size. Let's go back to Dan and find out how it's done. Okay, now before I can teach you this trick, everybody has to promise to keep a secret. Promise. Promise. Rabbit's honor. Okay, well that goes for all of the tricks we're learning today. This is really very simple, but it takes an awful lot of practice in order to make it look right. Before I began, I cut off a small piece of cardboard from the side of a cereal box, just about like that. Now, the size may vary for your hands if they're a little bit smaller. What you do is you fold over one third, this is about one inch in each of the three panels, and you fold over another third. That way we're going to form a small cardboard tube. Now I place some tape on the side to seal it up, and we have just a dandy little tube there. See that? Okay, yeah. very good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very small. Now I also use some elastic, and I've got some right over here. Just the stretchy type of elastic that people use to sew with. Now to one end of the elastic, I tied a knot around a paper clip. We'll explain where that's going to go in just a moment. This piece of elastic, or this end of the elastic, slips right through the little tube. Do you see that? It comes out this side? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to tie a knot in this piece of elastic right over here. Now once again, the elastic, just like the cardboard tube, may vary in size. So you're going to have to find out what works best for you. And once you determine the right size, you're all set. After you've tied a few knots, Clip away the excess elastic, and one last tip. Bring the elastic down to the very bottom of the tube, or the knot to the bottom of the tube, and place one more piece of tape on it, just like that. This is something that's never seen by the audience. The pull vanisher actually hangs behind your back. Now, I used to clip it. I clip it right there on my belt with the paper clip, okay? If you're wearing a coat, it's a fairly long coat or a sweater, nobody will ever see it. Now, you begin the trick by borrowing a dollar bill from someone. But I should tell you, you can also vanish small objects like, like coins or even handkerchiefs. But it does take some practice. So borrow a bill from somebody. I've got one right here. And you can fold it into thirds or you can fold it into quarters. It really doesn't matter. Now, as I'm reaching to get the bill from whoever I'm borrowing it from, the pull vanisher is really concealed in my hand. Nobody should ever see it once again. I take the bill, and even though it looks like I'm just tucking it down in my hand, it's really going inside the small pocket in the pull vanisher. As I go forward, it's very important once again to use that misdirection we talked about earlier. Look in the person's eyes and say, watch closely. Now here's really what's happening over here. The bill is inside the envelope, inside the little packet, but as I let go, it springs behind me. I pretend that it's still in my hand, and I wave my hand over, and take a look. It vanishes. Pretty simple, huh? Yeah. Now remember, the success of this trick is really based on one thing. Practice, practice, practice. I can see where it takes practice. If you don't get it right, you'll end up with egg on your face. <laughs> <laughs> OK, here we go. One, two, three, and Magic! Hey, what's going on? It's upside down! Come on, guys! This is ridiculous! You know, one thing every magician needs is a magic wand. And, oh, look, mine arrived today. There's a magic wand in there? Oh, sure. Why do you think they call it a magic wand? Wow. Hold on to that, Dustin. Come on over here, and I'll show you a trick with the wand. You can use a wand for a lot of different things, but it's great when you show a box empty. You can just wiggle it around on the inside. What's in there? You bet. Give the front of the box a tap and the bottom. Now, watch. Here's where the magic really works with the wand. You wave it over the top, 
snap your fingers and clap your hands, and when you reach down inside the box, you can pull almost anything out. Even, take a look, a bunny rabbit! Aww. Wow, what a great looking rabbit! <laughs> it sure is. Now here's a honey nut bee to tell you what you'll need to perform this trick yourself. Ooh. Hi, gang. Here's what you need to do these two great tricks. First, for the magic wand, you'll need a wooden dowel about 15 inches long, a heavy rubber band, colorful tape, small envelopes, and of course, some safety scissors. And for the bunny out of a box trick, you'll need a cardboard box with the top removed. 20 inches of clear fishing line or yarn, a heavy rubber band, a stuffed animal, clear tape, and of course, those safety scissors. And now here's Dan to show you how to make the magic wand. Now before you can produce a magic wand, you have to have a wand to produce. Let me show you how to make one up. All I used to make mine is a small wooden dowel. Now that's a piece of wood that's rounded, and all you do is cover the dowel with some colored tape. You can use any color, but I made mine with green and yellow. The wand, then, is pulled out of the envelope, but we have a little bit of preparation on the envelope also. Because before you begin the trick, you have to snip away one corner of the envelope. The wand, then, goes up your sleeve, just like this. Now, it's a good idea to wear a sweater or a jacket for this trick because sometimes it gets a little too bulky just in your shirt sleeve. Now, secure the wand in place with a rubber band. See that? Yeah. Pick up the envelope and make sure you cover the missing corner. Open the envelope. And as you reach down, what you're really going to do is poke this wand through that missing section of the envelope. When you pull out the wand, your hand hides the wand coming out of your sleeve, just like that. Now let me show you one more time what it looks like from the audience's point of view, okay? Okay. okay. Bring up your sleeve and place the wand in there, just like that. Then poke it through the envelope. Now you may want to use this as your first trick because it's quite a stunner. As you hold up the envelope, all you do is reach inside, grab hold of the end, and pull the wand out. There it is. It's really quite amazing. Yeah. Dustin, you hold on to the wand. Shelly, I'll give you the envelope. And now let me show you how you can use the wand for the bunny out of the box trick. Remember what the, the honey nut bee told you you would need? The small piece of yarn with the rubber band in the middle and the bunny that you're going to produce out of the box or any small stuffed animal, a small roll of tape, a pair of safety scissors, and in case you don't want to use the yarn, another good thing to use is clear fishing line. This way nobody will see this, and you don't want them to see this during the trick. But we'll use yarn because it's a little easier to follow. Now I've tied two knots, one in each end of the piece of yarn, and the rubber band is just dangling in the middle. That's going to slip on the corners of the box. But before we can slip them on, we have to take the pair of safety scissors and carefully bring them down in the front corners of the box, just making a slit about an, a half an inch deep, just like that. Now you can see I've also removed the top of the box and the side flaps, so you just have an ordinary box with no top. Carefully slide the yarn or the string or the fishing line that you're going to use into these little grooves and then secure it with a piece of tape, just like that on the corners. That way you can be sure it won't go anywhere. Now, the last thing you have to do is to slip that bunny on that tiny rubber band. In order to do that, you have to fold him up like a little snowball. And then slide the rubber band over the bunny. There we go. Just like that. Make sure his hand is tucked in, too. OK. Now, you're all set to perform the trick. Here's how the box should be set on the table before you begin. The front of the box is towards me, and the bunny is hanging down below. 
Make sure you use a draped table so nobody can see the bunny down there. Now, when you begin, tip the box forward and place your magic wand on the inside and rattle it around to prove it's empty. Then, set the box down on the table and pull it back just a short way. Now, watch very closely. See? The bunny swings into the bottom of the box. Actually, the top of the box. And as you push the box forward to tip it down, the bunny is already inside. Now pull the box towards you and wave your hand over the top of the box and quickly reach down and remove the rubber band from around the bunny. Now the bunny just rests in the box for a moment and you pick up your magic wand one more time and wave it over the top. As you do, tap the box, snap your fingers and clap your hands and when you reach into the box, there's a bunny inside. Pretty amazing, huh? Yeah. yeah. It is kind of fun. Now that's all there is to the bunny out of the box trick, but remember to watch the videotape over in case you have any questions. That's it. Okay. Whoa! Oh, goodness, I'm sorry. I, I guess I hocus when I should have focused. It's the Smarcer! <laughs> Say, I know you. You're quite a wizard. That's right. I thought uh, you and I could exchange some magical secrets, you know, uh, man to wizard. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll show you the first trick I ever learned. Wonderful. And I teach you the first trick I ever learned, but I, uh, I can't remember which one it is. It was so <laughs> long ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet it was. My trick uses three small boxes. Take a look. Now, one of the boxes has a small rattle in it. And the object of this trick is to see if you can follow that box, okay? All right. Here we go. We just move the boxes around. And just like that. Okay, see if you can tell me where it is. Well, I watched, and I think it's the one in the middle. The one in the yeah. middle, huh? Mm -hmm. Let's look. Sorry, mm. that's not it. But I'll give you another choice. Oh, the one on the end. The one on the end. Which one? They're both on the end. Well, it makes my odds better. <laughs> oh, the one on my end. Oh, right over here. Right. Let's listen. Sorry. You see, Mr. Smorcer, the one that rattles is right over here. But I'll give you another chance, OK? All right. Here we go. OK, where is it? Not to worry. It's the one in the middle. Oh, the one in the middle. Yeah. Let's listen. Sorry. Oh, one more chance. Ah, uh, the one on the far end. Uh -huh. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, well, yeah. Sure you don't want to change your mind? No, 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 no. Okay. You see, the one that rattles was over here. However, it could have been this one, or it could have been this one. But well, we picked those two. You yeah. sure did. But before I explain the riddle of the rattle, here's the honey nut bee. Ah, ah, chew! Ah, chew! Gosh, I thought I'd enjoy working with a magician with all those pretty flowers they use. Bees love flowers, but these flowers are made of feathers, and I'm allergic to birds. Ah, chew! You're learning the rattle box trick, and I've gathered up all the things you need right here. You'll need four small boxes with lids, one or two rubber bands that will fit around your wrist, and something that rattles, like Honey Nut Cheerios. Now let's see how the magic happens. Here it is, the riddle of the rattle explained. If you listen carefully, none of the boxes rattle, or they can all rattle. because the real secret of this trick is with the hidden box that you have up your sleeve that nobody knows about. See that? Yeah. Now this is a duplicate box, and on the inside, I have some cereal. Cover it up, and that is hidden right up your sleeve and held in place with a little rubber band. Now it's best to wear a sweater or a jacket for this trick also. Mm -hmm. And don't repeat this trick too many times, otherwise people will be watching very closely after the second or third time around. Mm -hmm. Now, it's just a matter of picking up the box with this hand, and it looks like the rattle's inside. Or it sounds like the rattle is inside, but if you pick it up with this hand, there's nothing. Simple as that. 
sea s'morser. The secret to that was under your nose the entire Whoa. time. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, hi, Rabbit. Hi, Rabbit. Hi, Rabbit. hi everybody. Uh, Dan, I was watching very carefully, mm -hmm. and I was wondering, does that trick work with any size container? Oh, just about any container. Well, what about those containers over there? Oh, sure, let's check. Okay. Let's give it a try. We've got three containers. See if you can find out where the rattle is, Rabbit. Are you ready? Yeah. It's the one in the middle. Yeah. In the middle? Mm -hmm. Right. Let's listen. Hey. That wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> uh, okay, Rabbit. We've been saying that magic is full of surprises, but that's not exactly what I had in mind. Whoa. You know, the secret to most magic tricks are pretty simple, but just knowing how a trick is done doesn't make you a magician. But maybe we should talk about what it takes to be a real magician. Well, tell you what, how about if I change into my costume and you get the rest of the gang and we'll all meet on stage, okay? Okay. okay. Great. Okay, as we've been saying, just because you know the secret of a magic trick, that still doesn't make you a magician. But here are some rules that you might want to keep in mind. First, never reveal the secret of a trick. Because if you do, that takes all the fun out of it for the audience. And after all, what's magic without the fun, right? Now, also, never repeat a trick. Because if you do, the audience will be watching more closely the second time around, and they may just find out how the trick is done. Also, you might want to keep in mind developing a little patter or a story to go with each trick. That way, it will make it more interesting for your audience, and it will also make your misdirection a little easier. Finally, make sure you practice every trick over and over again until you're confident of your performance. And if you want to learn more about magic, there are some great books at your public library. So go to the library and read all about it, okay? Dan, would you show us another illusion? Yeah. Sure. As a matter of fact, we've got one set right now, so watch closely. See if you can figure it out, okay? Here we go. That's what an illusion looks like from the front. But since you promised to keep a secret, we'll show you what it looks like from the backstage view. Imagine, if you will, that gold curtain is where the audience is seated. And right out here is where the stage crew is. You'll be able to see what everybody backstage can see and find out the secret to this trick. But remember, it's very important that you not tell anyone. It'll be our little secret, OK? You'll see Allison move from one box over into the other without being seen. We'll show you what we mean. I think we're just about set, so watch closely. Here we go. Allison begins behind the large box. I'll be on this side, playing to the audience out here. Watch. <laughs>
Hey kids, like I say, there's always a way for a magician to fool you. And no matter how much you know about magic, it's still great fun to be fooled. Wow, this has been fun. Tricks are for me. No, silly rabbit. Tricks are for kids. But magic tricks are for everyone. <laughs> we all hope you've enjoyed watching and learning about magic tricks over the past hour. And from all of us and all of your friends at Big G Cereals, we wish you a magical future. Say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.